Let's go. I can't lose. Welcome to the Lone Star State, and you're looking at the capital city of Austin, just a few blocks away from the Capitol building. Here at the Convention Center, get ready for Art of War II, mixed martial arts action coming your way tonight on Friday Fight Night here on HDNet. Hello everyone, I'm Kenny Rice along with Olympic gold medalist Jeff Blatnick. Glad that you could join us. We have a very intriguing undercard leading up to our main event tonight. It is Freddy Espriacueta who is coming in here with a record of four and two, all four wins by knockout. He is well known throughout the state of Texas for his boxing ability. He is going up against a veteran MMA fighter and David Luoso. Luoso comes in from Canada. He's a very versatile guy, but he has three times the experience of Espricreta. Not only a number of fights, but the type of fights. Luoso is seven times in the UFC, so he's used to the pressure cookers. This promises to be a great fight. Both like stand-up, both like striking. Both have heavy hands. Luoso also has elbows, and uh, Espiro Cueta also has Muay Thai kickboxing in the background. So look for this to be a real stand-up brawl, possibly a KO. Luoso's nickname is The Crow. He says it's not showtime, it is crow time. We will see about that, or we'll see if Espiro Cueta can keep it up and swinging, which is his strong point, as we take a look now at our MMA rules here in Texas. And Jeff Blatnick wrote most of these MMA rules a few years ago. That's correct. Started out with just no biting, no eye gouging, but a whole host of others have been added. No grabbing the fence, no spitting out an opponent. So the fighter's safety is the number one issue with the rules. The main event is Priya Cueta and Luaso coming up later. Let's get the undercard underway here in Art of War II and take a look at the tail of the tape of our first fight. Lozano is giving up some weight here to Justin Howard. Howard coming in, the heavier fighter at 247 compared to 225. Justin Howard, we saw him in the inaugural Art of War. Now let's go to Tom Looney with the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, it's time for our second fight of the night. This bout scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Entering, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red trunks with red stars. This man is making his professional debut tonight here at Art of War. He stands five feet, ten inches tall, fighting out of McKinney, Texas, representing Garcia's competition team, Tony Lozano. His opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trucks. This man has a professional record of one win, one loss. He's six feet one. He weighs 247 pounds. Fighting out of the L.A. Boxing Club of Austin, Texas, representing San Diego State University fight team, Justin the Savage Howard! As we get ready for this one, scheduled for three five-minute rounds, we saw Howard fight before. He lost to Justin Wren in Dallas. And Lozano making his pro debut. Lozano says he has 58 amateur fights, the 30-year-old in the red trunks. I'm guessing he must have started when he was about 14. It's a lot of fights. And Howard is winging some kicks here. That's going to get Lozano's attention. Just manhandling him. See if he goes for the mount. Howard is 3-1 and one as a pro. He has good experience, though, being a member of the San Diego State University fight team. And we saw him take charge of the first round against the talented wrestler Justin Wren before losing that in the second round in Dallas a few weeks ago here on HDNet. 
And he's a young and you know, not very much experience, so it really shows when he comes right here. He's Kamura, Kamura, and he got the it. Play. Yep. That is it. Less than a minute into this fight. And Justin Howard gets the submission victory Thank over you. Tony Lozano, who has a very short pro debut. Now give Howard credit, he learned the lessons from Art of War 1, came back very prepared, able to do some tremendous kicks. And that set up the game where he brought him down and then just put the Kimura on and ended it. Well, let's take him one more look at it. Heck, we could show the entire first round as and quickly as it went. there you see the torque, able to twist the arm, pushing the wrist towards the legs, and that creates the tension. You see the tap on the ground by Lozano. Great win for Howard. Howard running his record to three and one. Let's go back to Tom Looney to get the official time on this first round victory. Fight fans, referee Don Kernich calls a halt to the fight at 50 seconds of the first round. Your winner, Justin the Savage Justin Howard from San Diego, he has found a home here in Texas. Good showing in the loss to Justin Wren and just a dominating performance here, a first round Kimura victory over Tony Lozano. I'm impressed with the improvement from his last fight. He's doing the right things. He's adding weapons to his arsenal and he's being confident. More Art of War II action coming up. You're watching Friday Fight Night on HDNet from Austin, Texas. Stay with us. You're watching Friday Fight Night on HDNet. Hello there, MMA fans. I'm Kenny Rice. And I'm Boss Rudin. And are you looking to get the inside scoop on anything MMA? Coming up this week, we'll talk to the former champ, Andre Avlovsky. We'll hear from sports writer Gary Herman. And Lucia Riker will join us. It's Inside MMA tonight at 9.30 Eastern, only here on HDNet. You're watching Friday Fight Night on HDNet. As we take a look now at the tail of the tape, 155 pounders from the Southwest area, from Oklahoma, Whitney Brown against Edwin Figueroa. Here's Whitney Brown, 5'11", 155 pounder, has yet to lose as a pro. He's 3-0 out of Edmond, Oklahoma. An undefeated young fighter with a solid right hand and a good triangle choke. From McKinney, Texas, Edwin Figueroa making his pro debut, 5'5", 155 pounder. The three-time amateur world champion in his pro debut trains in kickboxing, boxing, and grappling. So a couple of young fighters, 23-year-old Whitney Brown is 3-0 in his career, 22-year-old Edwin Figueroa making his professional debut. Let's go to ring it out to Tom Looney for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, Damas y Caballeros, this fight scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Introducing first, out of the blue corner, this man has a professional record of three wins, zero losses. He's 5'11", he weighs 155 pounds. See if you can put him down, he's Whitney Brown! Now his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue trunks tonight. It's his professional debut tonight. He's 5'6", he weighs 155, Fighting out of McKinney, Texas. Representing Garcia's competition team, Edwin Figueroa. Figueroa making his pro debut, but Jeff, he lists that he has 55 amateur fights. He's no. 22. No. He could have been Ready? in any one of the disciplines Ready? he trains in, kickboxing, boxing, grappling. 
But MMA is a different story. Striking and grappling at the same time, not just striking. Round shows him a big roundhouse that goes high over the head. And coming right back, swinging his finger off. He's ready for the debut, perhaps, and Brown wants to get it on the ground. And does. Oh, and he rushed them out. He rushed them out, and Figueroa coming around on top. Brown overshooting the runway there. Figueroa going down. Armbar, and he's oh. got it. Brown he's got it. it. Brown may have it. Figueroa early going in trouble. Can he avoid the armbar? Well, he was able to avoid the leg there, so he's gotten out of the tightness of the armbar, and he's able to escape it. Figueroa showing some quickness. The crowd oohed with that, but Figueroa blocked that big kick by Brown. And again, those kicks look nice, but they're not scored. Let's see if he goes back to the takedown here, rips the double. It's weird, he's trying to pull the right leg of Figueroa out, and he really should be pulling the left leg out and use his head to help ram him down. I worry about the guillotine right there. Figueroa, look at that right arm of his. He's trying to do some work on Whitney Brown. Brown's on top and looks like he's moving to the side enough to get away. And yeah, the pressure of the guillotine chokes is choke is gone. And there he took his time in the mount. He didn't rush it, but again, he's muscled over. Brown had the mount, loses the mount, and now Edwin Figueroa goes to work right in front of us. He had an opportunity in an arm bar, but he couldn't hook the head with the leg. Okay, Brown has more technique, but Figueroa is quicker and, here's and a has a brawling show. style. Now he tries to get in there with that left arm. Is he able to get it underneath and try to get the guillotine in? Fence saved Brown there. There's no question. Brown continues to leave his head down. Now he's able to pop up, get back in mount. He's up high. What kind of work can he do here? He's got some blood coming out of his nose as he tries to get some ground and pound action going. Figueroa has been able to escape a few times here in the first round. Heels are in. Watch for the naked choke here. Rear naked choke. Needs to dig under the arms. Set it up by punching. Getting a little over the top now. He's up high on the back of Figueroa. Needs to arch, bring his hips to bear. Flatten Figueroa out. Figueroa is going to come out back door again. Figueroa is quick. He's quicker than Brown. But Brown rushed that mount and there got high in the ride. And both things caused problems. Figueroa now on top. Let's see if he can ground and pound. Under two minutes to go here in this first round. An entertaining round it's been. Two young fighters, Brown with a 3-0 record. He's on the bottom of it all right now. And Edwin Figueroa in his pro debut, the 22-year-old from McKinney, Texas, up near the Dallas area. Brown tries for Kamara. Eating a little bit of leather now. Nice job with the guard there, getting some distance. Those aren't let oh, that one landed. Got a good blow in. Figueroa has gotten a couple of good punches in in these last few seconds on Whitney Brown. Like about Figueroa, he's throwing combinations, not just one punch here, one punch there. Brown able to stop the first, but unable to stop the rest. And a good left is in there by Figueroa. Brown showing blood now from his nose and his mouth. Nice sweep, roll. Now it's Brown's turn on top. Seems like the top position, nobody stays in very long here. Now here's a good posture. And again, Figueroa gives his back up. Let's see if Brown can do some work on that. He's not able to get in there enough, though it looks like he's trying to get that naked choke action going with his right arm. He should stay behind the arms. That'll keep him from coming over the top. And wait for the opportunity to strike and set up that new naked choke. And that was nice. Now he's trying with the left arm. Let's see if he can get it locked in and going. He's got under 30 seconds. He's got to get that left arm, though, under the chin more, Jeff. And he cannot do it. And Figueroa, once again, I mean, it's not pretty, but the kid is working hard and getting away. And now he's up on top, throwing punches again. Pretty entertaining first round. It is. Back and forth. And there's the brawler of Figueroa. He has landed many more punches than Whitney Brown here in this first round. Final 10 seconds, and Edwin Figueroa 
is ready to fight. Brown slow to get up. Brown looks a little tired. Brown looks exhausted as a matter of fact. He came out on style points, but Whitney Brown won that round, or Edwin Figueroa won that Brown round over Brown by getting some punches in there and getting out of every time that uh, Brown tried to get him into any kind of position, Figueroa escaped. He was able to sweep him and reverse him. Here, standing, big right hand lands to the side of the head of Brown. Figueroa doing a real nice job with throwing combinations, multiple punches. There you look at Edwin Figueroa from McKinley, Texas, 55 amateur fights, making his pro debut. Talked about his overall fight game. Again, it's not all style points with this guy, but he is very aggressive and quick. Figueroa was very calm in the corner, looking straight ahead. Brown was looking down, and that gives you a little bit of a body English to tell you where he is. A little bit of doubt in Brown's mind, I believe, right now. Brown in the black, he is 3-0, a very young career himself, and there's a nice kick by Figueroa. Oh, big time knee, but it didn't land. Brown swings wow. wildly, misses. Figueroa comes back and scores with a kick. There, the arms are down, mouth open. Brown looks very tired. Brown is worn out. He's just reaching for that big swing and a miss. And Figueroa scores with a kick again. Take down attempt. Let's see if the sprawl will work. Needs to straighten the legs. Right now he's just laying there. He has an opportunity here to get on top. And there it is. Edwin Figueroa trying to get in there again, see if he can work on a rear naked choke. Has his left arm in there. I don't think it's under enough, though, right now. I don't know. I think Brown's ready to go. There Brown's is. out. He taps out. I think he was absolutely worn out by that's that. It, that's it. He didn't need much of a choke to end it there. Brown just looked that way at the end of the first round. That sums it all up. Whitney Brown with his first pro loss, and in his debut, Edwin Figueroa gets the rear naked choke here in the second round. Take another look at this, Jeff. You could just tell by the body English there. He wasn't fighting the hand coming across, and as soon as he got it locked, he tapped. And I learned a long time ago from fighters, the greatest submission weapon in all of MMA isn't a hold, it's conditioning. In the end, if you can make the guy just gas, he quits. You look at Figueroa, who gave us a backflip as well. I mean, he's ready to go at least one more round. <laughs> Okay, Figueroa the winner. Let's get the official time. Turnish stops the fight in one minute, three seconds of the second round. Your winner from McKinney, Texas, Edwin Figueroa. And you see Whitney Brown suffering his first loss. He is still sitting on the mat, and Edwin Figueroa plenty to celebrate tonight as he picks up his very first pro win and his very first try. Very composed, never really extended himself in the fight, threw multiple punches, and went after the submissions when he had the opportunity. The big thing, he wore Brown out. More Art of War 2 action coming up from Austin, Texas. You're watching Friday Fight Night on HDNet. Stay with us. You're watching Friday Fight Night on HDNet. You know the legends. Fedor, Masrudin, Chuck Liddell. Prepare yourself for the future. Jay Huron, Wagley Fabiano, Tim Kennedy, Jason Mayhem Miller. Today's fighters, tomorrow's champions. HDNet Fights, tonight at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, on HDNet, your new home for MMA. You're watching Friday Fight Night on HDNet. As we take a look at the tail of the tape, as we get ready for a pair of 155 pounders from Texas, Randy Hauer out of Houston, a record of 8-8, eight and eight, claims he is one of the most active fighters in the Lone Star State, taking on Chris Bowles, who has a record of six and one. Here's Randy Hauer, 5'8", 155 pounder. He is eight and eight as a pro out of Houston. Wrestled in Minnesota and has some power in his hands. Four of his wins come by knockout.
From Dallas, Chris Bowles, 5'9", 155 pounder, 6-2 as a pro. Guy Metzger trained. Chris has a good right hand and loves the triangle armbo combo to get the submission. So Bowles and Howard, I think this is going to be a really interesting matchup between these Texans. They're both in their 30s. Uh, they both have uh, had some experience in amateur and some experience in pro. And we're ready for three five-minute rounds. And here's Tom Looney. In the last, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Damas y Caballeros. This fight scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Introducing first... Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trucks. This man has a professional record of eight wins, eight losses. He's five feet, eight inches tall, and weighs 155 pounds. Fighting out of Houston, representing the Metro Fight Club, Randy Howe. Fighting out of the red corner. He's also wearing black trunks tonight. He has a record of six wins and two losses. He's 5'9", he weighs 155. He's fighting out of Dallas, representing the Lion's Den, Chris So Bowles against Howard. Jeff Bowles, all six of his victories, they've come by way of submission. You look at Howard briefly there. He has four knockouts, four decisions in his eight wins, and quickly, Bowles wants to get it on the ground, and that's where we start this fight. And right as they touch gloves, he drops in on uh, Howard and immediately gets him to the ground. This is a classic striker versus grappler matchup. Hauer, his strength in uh, tie boxing. And the mount was coming. Hauer felt it, changed off. Can he avoid the guillotine here? And he does. Nice kick. Got away with it. Bowles reaching out. You can tell he's just waiting to shoot in there, kick a little bit, and try to get it back on the ground. And oh, be taunted now by Howard. Well, the question's going to be, how does he go after the takedown? Does he bull rush him? Does he wait for the overswing on a punch? You know, or does he push him up against the fence? Howard letting him know, hey, that uh, kick is not going to bother him. Ooh, his knee oh, goes down. down. He is down. Howard slips, Bowles moves in. Howard was grabbing his right knee. Well, he's still fighting. He's not tapping. But I don't know. I mean, that just about stopped him in his tracks. Chris Howard right against the fence. Randy Howard right against the fence. And Chris Bowles right on top of it. Howard's leg went out from under him. He was clearly grabbing his right knee when he went down on a slip. And it wasn't a slip by contact or anything like that either. I mean, he was just moving. And Bowles now gets some good shots in on the left. He is working at left hand on the right side of the head of Howard. Happening right in front of us. Howard now trying to get back on his feet, and he does. What a great job by Howard. And Howard nice with knee. a knee. With a knee, and he follows it up with a good body punch. And Howard says, let's make this a stand-up fight, and Bowles says, let's make it a brawl. Kamara attempt here by Bowles. He's trying to reach under the arm. And that's what you do is you start striking the near side. Keep the leverage. I don't know. I think that knee's bothering him. He just got folded over right there. Well, interesting. Howard was able to catch his breath enough, and he just came right back with a burst of energy. I think that was trying to put Bowles away really quick. I mean, those punches were thrown with some serious intensity. And this is where the submission guy has the advantage, moving around on top here. Floating, if you will, is the way it was described to me by many fighters. Bowles, who is on top, all six of his victories have come via submission. Randy Howard would prefer to keep this standing up. What and now he's back Howard. up. Oh, his knee looks fine now. 
Howard wanting to let his opponent know as well, I'm okay. Remember, Howard fell in the first round, early in this first round, when it looked like his right knee just gave out on him. He looks good now, moving well on the balls of his feet. And coming in with some shots of his own is Bowles. Well, if Howard is good, he needs to calm down, or excuse me, Bowles is good, he needs to calm down a little bit. Adrenaline starts pumping when you think you're hurt. Bowles showing some kicks. Howard has a couple of big punches. They haven't landed squarely yet, but hits the kind of punch that could end this fight that quickly, and now Bowles is back where he wants to be on top on the mat. Nice single leg shot to get that takedown. I give Bowles credit here. He's pretty darn quick. Howard, though, right there, able to turn the tide yet again from the bottom position. Howard back on his feet. Let's see if Howard can calm down here. I tell you, Howard and Bowles, both in their 30s, both are in very good shape. It appears that way. Neither one seems gassed. We've seen younger fighters. Tire faster. Bowles getting some knees in. Dirty Back out. A warning there, making sure that Howard was not holding on to the fence. Yeah, he's trying to lock his hands. He's not grabbing fence, he's just trying to lock hands. Keep referee Don Turnage right on top of it. He's trying to keep Bowles tight to him so he can't strike. Ten seconds to go in this first round. And Howard weathered the storm. It looked as though it was going to be a short fight. And he's still in there. Corner will help him here. And that is the end of a very entertaining round one. Randy Howard and Chris Bowles, as you take a look at Howard, looked like the fight might be over when he fell on his own. His knee, it appeared, gave out in that first round. And here it is. He's right. backing up. Oh, he stepped on the fence. That's it. His right heel hit that bottom pad, and he wasn't expecting it. That's what happened. You see him grab his knee at first. Take another look at it. And right in on him. Got to give Bulls credit. That's what you're supposed to do if your opponent goes down and he's not signaling he's done. You keep after him. Well, now his face yeah. looks a lot better now. When he went to the corner, it didn't look too confident. Coming out of the corner now, he's got his eyes wide, looks good. Howard claims to be one of the most active fighters in Texas. He showed that in the first round, even after falling down. He was able to get back up and show some improvement there in the latter stages of that first round. Chris Bowles naturally likes to get it back on the ground. That's where he's won every one of his fights. Bowles is getting off first. Howard's letting him get off first. Bowles Superman trying with punch. the Superman. <laughs> he got a lot more kryptonite on that one, though. Missed entirely. Now, that that's, it. that's the big S on his chest is when he gets this thing on the ground. And that was simple. I mean, he kept thinking punch, and he just dropped down, ripped the legs right out. Work it, there, man. Work it. Work his ribs. Wear him out. Out of the head. Bowles trying for some body shots. What do you think about Howard in these positions when you see him there in guard? He keeps getting out. Look at him. Bang. He does it again. And that surprises me against a submission specialist. Howard back up and gets a nice kick in. That'll, that'll wake uh, Bowles up there. Those kind of kicks cut down on mobility, too. Bowles trying to show some punching power of his own. Both feet are set when he throws the punches. Howard is moving, and so he really doesn't have a lot of power throwing those arms out while he's moving. Bowles trying to measure him with those punches. 
Oh, he's trying to bait him into following there at that spinning back fist rating. There it is. Bowles was able to set it up like a good fastball pitcher throwing a changeup, and then he shoots in and gets the takedown. Side mount. Looked like he was going to try to cross over the mount, and he does. He's got the full mount, and that's what Bowles wants to do. And covering up is not the answer. Howard turns around. He's got it. Turned He's got it. He's kill. got it. Bowles is all over him, and that's it. Chris Bowles wins for the seventh time every time it has been by way of submission. And here in the second round, he lured Randy Howard in with his stand-up game, shot in, got the takedown. Howard turns his back, and Chris Bowles is able to move in there and get the rear naked choke. As you take a look at Randy Howard, who goes to eight and nine in his pro career. And there's Chris Bowles, seven and one, the man from Dallas. As we take one more look at it, moving in on the side is Bowles, and Bowles continues to work, and now he's going to move into the full mound, and here he starts with the grounded pound on Randy Howard. Nice methodical punches, and then Howard turns his back, and you don't do that with a ground specialist like Bowles. He turned right into a rear naked choke, and Chris Bowles takes advantage of it. Howard taps out here in the second round. Bowles running his record to seven and one, and you see both these guys, a lot of respect for each other. And now let's get the official time with ring announcer Tom Looney for the victory by Bowles. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Don Turnett stops the fight at 2.14 of the second round. The winner, of course, from Dallas, Texas and Lions Den Gym, Chris Bowles! Chris Bowles, Randy Howard, a couple of 30-year-old Texans in their mid-30s. They've been through some battles, not with each other until tonight. And it's Bowles getting the win via submission. That's the way all seven of his victories have come. And he's standing with the guy that knows a lot about submissions, our gold medalist, Jeff Blatnick. Jeff? Thank you, Kenny. Chris, real good fight. What's your impression of Howard? He's, he's slippery. I had a hard time holding him down. You know, you get in certain positions, you can't. You think you got the wizard locked in, or and he has good hips. He keeps moving, gets himself up, back up. So it's tough to keep him down there. It seemed in the second round you started getting off first, started to land a lot of strikes. I could tell he was tired. You know, uh, his pace slowed considerably. He had a couple of explosive moments in the first round. But then, second round, he just stopped moving. Well, it's up there on the screen. Why don't you talk us through the finish here? Uh, yeah, well, once I got the mount, I knew I could either TKO, I mean, or just work him right there and knock him out. Uh, but he turned over. He was just trying to protect himself and gave up the pretty wide open rear naked choke. So that's what I went for. Well, Chris, congratulations. Congratulations to your trainer and manager, Guy Metzger, and Trey Telegman as well. Best of luck in your next fight. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you all for coming out. Thanks, Jeff. As you heard Jeff mention, one of the MMA greats, Guy Mesger, in the corner of Chris Bowles as Bowles picks up his seventh career victory tonight. A rear naked choke submission of Randy Howard in the second round. And there's more MMA action here on Friday Fight Night. You're watching Art of War 2 from Austin, Texas. Stay with us. You're watching Friday Fight Night on HDNet. You're watching Friday Fight Night on HDNet. Art of War 2 action, Austin Convention Centers. We take a look at the tail of the tape. 195 pounders from Texas getting ready to go in the ring. Brandon McDowell against Alex El Toro Andrade. On his way to the cage, he has a ton of experience, a 20 and 16 pro record, fighting before the home folks here in Austin, 6'2", 195 pounder, Brandon McDowell. Almost all of his wins are by submission. He wants the fight to go to the ground, but he also has power in his hands with nine knockouts.
And making his way now to the cage out of Dallas, Texas, 5'11", 195-pounder Alex El Toro Andrade, a record of 5-3 and three as a pro. Well, he took a five-year layoff, but in Art of War 1, he came back and won his first fight back with experience in both Pride and UFC. He understands the fight game. Andrade coming off a victory in the first Art of War in Dallas when he had a second round knockout of Klaus Akerson. McDowell against Andrade. Let's go now to ring announcer Tom Looney. One of these guys is a grappler. One of these guys is a bull. You can figure out which one's which. This bout scheduled for three five minute rounds. Introducing first, out of the blue corner, wearing camouflage. He holds a professional record of 20 wins and 16 losses. He's six feet two. He weighed in at 195 pounds, fighting out of Austin, Texas. <laughs> Representing Jeff Road Jiu Jitsu Camp. Brandon McDowell! Now introducing his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing red trunks. A former UFC and Pride fighter holding a record of five wins, three losses. He's 5 feet 11. He weighs 195 pounds. He's from Dallas, Texas. He represents the Lion's Den. Alex El Toro Andrade. So Brandon McDowell here from Austin. You heard though a big applause for Alex Andrade, very known Respected fighter with the background in UFC and Pride and a big win in the inaugural Art of War as round one is underway, scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Be interesting to see how they approach this. Andrade, very powerful individual, had that UFC and Pride experience, but he had about a five-year layoff between Art of War and one. But he seems to have been coming back now, trying a guillotine choke here on McDowell. Doesn't gets, work. Gets a nice knee in, though, in the process. Nice sprawl, though. Keeping McDowell's head down. Can load up on a shot to the ribs, bring one back to the head. McDowell with 20 pro victories, nine of those by KO. Maybe a little surprising considering how quickly he wanted to take this to the mat on Andrade. And Andrade unloading with a couple of nice lefts. They're able to get in there. Oh, going out. for the attempt. He's got it. Got it nice. He did. That's it. That was either an Achilles or a heel hook, but either one, it ended the fight. That's how quickly Andrade can go to work. And he did, and it's over, and he knows it in round one. I mean, he literally was working Brandon McDowell over from head to toe as this fight comes to a quick end here in the first round, and El Toro picks up another victory. As you see, McDowell congratulate him, and here's the action. Here's what did it. On his back now is McDowell and Andretti. Punch after punch. Some of those not as effective as others, and then quickly, look here, he moves and starts working in. And he gets the heel hook in there, working on the knee area, and Alex Andrade picks up the victory. Even though he didn't have as many fights professionally as McDowell, one could argue with that UFC and Pride experience, he was the more experienced fighter in this one. And it shows there as he gets 
McDowell to tap out and let's get the official time. Here's ring announcer Tom Looney. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Kerry Hadley stops the fight one minute and two seconds into round number one. Your winner from Dallas, Texas, Alex El Toro of Grammy. Andrade just overmatching Brandon McDowell here, getting the first round submission. And he is standing by now with Jeff Blatnick. Thank you, Kenny. Alex, you had a five-year layoff. He came back to the Art of War, and you've got two straight victories. Tell us about this one. Well, this one I did for you, especially for you, because last one I heard the comment, comments you did about me that I wasn't working on my submissions. So that was for you right there. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate that. But how did you set him up for that uh, uh, Achilles heel hook? We were just working on uppercuts, really, and he didn't give me that. Uh, he shot on me. I sprawl. Just was trying to use the elbows I could. Every time I punched him, he would turn his head, gave me that leg, went for it. Like I said, I did it for you. So that's something we're complaining about me taking too long. <laughs> well, it was a great fight. That layoff doesn't seem to bother you at all. What's next? I'm back again to whatever my, my managers want me to do. I'm ready for anybody and, and everybody. I'm going to try to go down to 185, win the championship there in USC, hopefully, or Art the War, whoever gives me the title, and then whatever the future. Well we, well, we wish you the best of luck. Great performance tonight. Hey, guys. Bye-bye. And so we look forward to seeing El Toro back in the ring again soon after a two-year absence. He has come back in a two-month period and with a second-round knockout and a first-round submission tonight of Brandon McDowell. An impressive victory for Alex Andrade. And there's more Art of War 2 coming up when we come back to Austin, Texas. You're watching Friday Fight Night on HDNet. You're watching Friday Fight Night on HDNet. You're watching Friday Fight Night on HDNet. Welcome back to Art of War 2 on Friday Fight Night. Let's go back now to Art of War 1 and revisit one of our best matches, Carlo Prater versus Anthony Lapson. Take a look now at the tail of the tape. Lapsley busy this year, his third fight of the season. Carlo Prater, that big win down in Brazil back in November. Now let's meet the fighters back to the cage and Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three five minute rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing white with black, this man is a mixed martial artist who holds a perfect professional record of six wins with no losses. He stands six feet one inch tall, weighing in at 170 and one half pounds. Fighting out of Fort Wayne, Indiana, representing Hammer House and Dragon's Den, Anthony The Recipe Lapsley. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing brown with white, he's a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 19 wins with four losses and one draw. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 169 pounds. Fighting out of Brasilia, Brazil, representing Puda Muay Thai and the Black House, Carlo Prata. And when the action begins, our referee in charge is Mark Holly. Receive my instructions. Protect yourselves at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Any questions here? Questions here. Touch them up. Touch them up. Good luck to you, man. We get ready now for the main event. You look at Lapsley, still unbeaten after six pro fights. His toughest test to date coming up against the veteran Carlo Prater. And round one is underway and Lapsley charges in and Prater is ready. Lapsley trying a headlock there, but I think what you might have noticed right away from Lapsley, he's a lefty with that big left hand. Lapsley talks about his well-rounded game. Jeff Mason is a state wrestling champion in Fort Wayne, but he also is proud of his boxing and jiu-jitsu skills. 
Now, Prater's seen a lot of grappling. Living down in Brazil, you see a lot of grappling. So I think he's going to be absolutely very comfortable on the ground. Tremendous Brazilian jiu-jitsu skills. He's also got some great kicks. We haven't seen him yet, but I was told to watch for the kicks. Prater, born in Brazil to American parents. He has dual citizenship, grew up in Houston, as Ron told us earlier, his mom, a professor at Texas A&M, here to watch him fight for the first time in his career. Spends most of his time now in Brazil, where he is coming off a first round win over Marlon Mateus back in November. He won that one with a first round TKO. Seen that Prater low the black seat to sleep there and then hit him with a trip, put him down. Now we'll find out how much grappling skill Anthony Lapsley has in terms of jiu-jitsu. Getting to a state championship, you gotta be something good on your feet and good on the mat. There. Well, there he goes. Guillotine. Maybe that's a guillotine. That and it's tight. Be a good position. Prater working it in hard. Lapsley having gets trouble. Out. He gets out. Lapsley escapes. He could have got him down to the ground, but Lapsley kept his balance, able to stay up on his feet, work his way out. Maybe that youth playing a little bit of an edge there. Now, I'm not quite sure if Prater had it set the way he wanted, but he could have pulled him down to the ground. Unbalanced him enough to get him to lay on top of him. I think that would have been over. Give Lapsley credit. He didn't panic. And he worked his way out. Look at this guard. Both knees under. I think that's how... Prater is approaching this fight is to try to catch Lapsley in transition. Moving from one position to another and finding a submission that'll work. Lapsley continues his ground attack here. Trying to get a little leverage and avoid being kicked by Prater. Trying to drop a couple of hammers in on the right side. Now you see Prater using his feet, trying to push him away. And Boy, he did does. he push him away, but he put himself into a rear naked choke. Look at Lapsley. He bounces off the fence, and he may be choking out Prater. Lapsley trying to wrap it up here in the first round. Prater fighting it off hard. Lapsley trying to dig in, and Prater responds, but now Lapsley moves into a mountain, delivers a blow. Lapsley, the quicker fighter here. Boy, that was some great action. Both fighters. What about Lapsley? Bounces off a fence, tries to get a choke on. That doesn't work. He gets a mount and starts trying to ground it down. I don't think Crater thought he was going to throw him off of him that well and then he would respond so quickly. But without question, Lapsley has some speed, both in his hands and in his overall motion and quickness. Now Lapsley trying for the takedown here. He wants to get back down on the ground. Let's do some more work. That's what he's thinking against Prater. I just don't think Prater has recovered from the fact he used his legs to throw Lapsley off him. And when he turned, Lapsley bounced so hard, he took his back and almost choked him out. Lapsley used the fence like a trampoline on that. Yeah, he did. Down to 25 kicks on the clock here in the first round. An entertaining first Prater. round it is. Here Prater. comes Prater. Carlo Prater trying to close out the round strong. He's trying to work in there on the arms of Lapsley. Lapsley. Lapsley hanging in, final 10 seconds. He's gonna be all right as they continue to count it down here, waiting for that bell to ring, and that's it. And one more punch by Lapsley just before the bell. It was before the bell. Prater let Lapsley know it. Lapsley agreed, yes. But you see the damage done to Carlo Prater over that left eye, taking some punishment from Anthony Lapsley in that first round. Lapsley took his back, nearly choked him out, but he also got full mount, rained some blows down, and those blows took their toll. Nice double leg here, but Prater catches him in a guillotine. And to his credit, Lapsley keeps his balance on his feet, 
Not brought down to the mat, gave him that opportunity to pop his head out. And then, from the bottom there, two legs thrust Lapsley off him, but he bounces off the ring post, comes <laughs> right back in, and slaps her rear naked choke on Prater. And I don't think Prater was ready for that. I think that totally surprised him and give Lapsley the first round. You see the work there over the left eye of Carlo Prater. Lapsley later in that round was able to get a full mount and get some punches in, and they landed, obviously. And Anthony Lapsley trying to go 7-0 in his young career. It looks pretty impressive so far. Sure does. Great speed, good wrestling skills to get people down, and he's done some work with striking. You can see his hands are very, very quick, and with that lefty uh, unorthodox style, he can catch people. Round two, it is scheduled for three. Lapsley trying to get back down on the ground there. That's where he had his most success against Carlo Prater. And he succeeds in getting the takedown. Prater trying to work in there a little bit, but he's very high on that right arm up around the bicep. Well, that's going to hold Lapsley to him. Lapsley in side mount, which is a good position, but with his arm pinned under him like that, he can't bring his upper body up to create space to strike. Lapsley in a situation, he's got to be careful right here from those up kicks. Triangle. There's the triangle. Lapsley able to escape early in the first round. What about early here in the second round? Carlo Prater trying to go to work with him on that triangle. And Lapsley once again trying to stand up and stand out. Well, he doesn't have it set, but I think he was trying to bait him into bringing the arm in and go for an armbar. See how he's got that one arm trapped underneath the left arm of Lapsley. So he's working the combo there. He's almost got the triangle set. He's trying on that. A good right hand, though, by Lapsley. And again, the quickness, and Lapsley gets out of it. Didn't panic. Thought his way through it. Did the correct motion. Able to counter. Excellent point there. You can almost see... Lapsley thinking, can't you? Much like in the early going over here when it looked like in the first round. He might be caught an arm bar, might be a guillotine. He keeps kind of almost like a chess master moving along. Yeah, and each time that Prater creates a sufficient opportunity, the consequence is he winds up in a bad position. Rear naked choke the first time, side mount the second time. Lapsley doesn't try to get out right away. He does not panic. A lot of poise for a young pro. Tremendous physical talent, too. Great speed, great balance, good power. And a cut opens again. You saw a lot of work they were doing over that left eye of Carlo Prater. It's opening up. There's a nice right knee to the side of Prater as well. Good Boy, right. Lapsley is coming Listen. down now and trying to do some more damage to that side of the face. You could hear the impact of the bat. He was throwing with mean intention. Look at that, he's stepping over the jiu-jitsu guy. Uh -oh. But now watch out for the leg lock here. Well, he spins away from that. Prater was trying to grab him around the heel and look at Lapsley. Lapsley's quickness is taking over this fight. Trying to sink the arm in, grab a Kimura. Lapsley looks like he's trying to a basic return the wrestler to the mat technique there, folding the inside leg down. But Prater counters that. Oh, and Prater counters the double. There's a knee by Lapsley. And now he stops on the foot. We're seeing a little bit of everything in his arsenal here. That's right. I still think that's a fantastic technique. Inside trip attempt by Prater. And he finishes the double. Now watch the left arm there of Lapsley. Is he going to try to go to work around the neck? In the first round, Prater only had 15 seconds to try to work from the top. Here he's got over a minute. Lapsley trying to get in there and work on a guillotine with that left arm of his on Prater. And I just wonder if Prater has blown a lot of energy here. He doesn't seem to be moving up the body, doesn't seem to be as aggressive as he was in the first round. He's standing up trying to get out of that. Lapsley looks like he's catching his breath pretty easily. 
Now maybe Crater could work. He's got his head out. Lapsley doing a nice job. Double overhooks, hitting the arms. Thus, Crater cannot punch. Full mount. Now we'll see if Crater, who appears to be in the best position yet, can do something with 25 seconds to go here in round two. Side, side choke here, but he really doesn't have that arm. If he could fold the arm over the face of Lapsley and then lock his hands, he could have a shot. Left arm of Lapsley sparing him right now with 10 seconds to go. And you see Lapsley bringing the right arm up. You know it's bothering him. Can he survive? Yes, he does. Prater trying to close out strong. It's been Lapsley's fight so far. And I have a feeling if Prater gets to that top position again with enough time, he might be able to end this fight. Well, what about this now? After two rounds, we get ready for the third five-minute session here. Whose fight is it? First round, definitely Lapsley, Lapsley. but I'm not sure about the uh, second round there. That was very close. Both people were down on the ground. I might give that one to Prater. Let's take a look at Lapsley here working early. And again, that's a good shot that opens that cut back up over the left eye of Carlo Prater. I, I'm impressed with Lapsley. I am impressed with Lapsley. He's there's, learned a lot. There's the old there's foot, the foot stop. stop. Try to slow your opponent down by making the foot hurt. There you look at the young man out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Anthony Lapsley calls himself the recipe. And if you don't believe us, he has it tattooed on his back. Round three, third and final round underway here in our main event, Carlo Prater, Anthony Lapsley. Lapsley with a little spin there, maybe he's gonna show us some of that. Big swing and a miss with that kick by Prater and Lapsley comes in. And Lapsley now has the back, he'll try to bring Prater down and he does. Prater trying to get away and Lapsley moving around trying to get some mounted position here. Watch for a leg attempt again by Prater. It worked last time for him to get away. You're allowed to put your hand on the fence, but you can't have your fingers go through any of the loops. And Prater, able to threaten with that leg, has an opportunity now to return to the top position, and he does with lots of time left. This could spell trouble for Lapsley. It looked as though Prater had what he wanted at the end of the second round. Carlo Prater, this is his 25th pro fight. The seventh for Anthony Lapsley. Energy will have everything to do with who will win this fight now. Last round, it's been a very busy fight. Lots of action, mainly grappling. And look at this, an arm bar attempt by Lapsley. Lapsley has shown us a little bit of everything in this fight, tried for that arm bar. He's been able to get out of a few predicaments himself in this fight. Side mount now by Prater. Prater trying to get some leverage and score with one of these punches. Boy, look at the legs here. Everything up. Good look along the fence there at Lapsley. There can't be any striking or kicking here or kneeing because both wrestlers are grounded. You see the feet up by Prater's head, but he's not allowed to use them striking. It looks as though Prater's looking to strike now. At the end of that second round, he looked like he had an armbar choke attempt going. Prater may be wondering, if this thing's close, I'm going to get a few more punches in there to make sure if it goes to the judge's decision. Well, he could get a, certainly get this round if he stays on top. But I am impressed. Lapsley is just living in a half backward roll guard. And he's comfortable there. He seems very composed there. Doing a nice job of tying up the wrists. There's a couple of left forearms by Prater. Hasn't been able to deliver the big punch in comparison to Lapsley's 
two or three good punches in this. One that opened the cut over the left eye of Prater back in the first. Well, he's got full side mount now. And you are allowed to knee. So here come the knees to the side. And boy, they can add up. There's four or five knees to the side of Lapsley. Prater again with a couple of more. Lapsley hasn't been in this predicament. We've seen him get out of some jams. Now if you mix your timing up, instead of act like you're about to knee him, and as he tenses, when he relaxes, try to strike right as he relaxes. <laughs> Misses with that forearm. Here comes the mount attempt. Here comes the mount attempt. He's moving in. He's going to get it. Prater. Oh, and the big bridge. It. Lapsley. Again, the quickness of Lapsley. Prater forced it a little bit too much. Lapsley went ahead and bridged, was able to come out onto his base now, but you see Prater looking to try to scoop the head with that top leg, the left, left leg. Try to hook up an arm bar. We're down to 35 seconds. This has been a close one. Lapsley the first round, Prater perhaps the second round, and here in the third round is when it's going to be decided, and Lapsley's getting some punches in now. This could be a draw. First round Lapsley, last round Prater, middle round draw. Prater now looking to try to come out of it, but unable to. Immediately gets Lapsley back in his guard. We're down to 10 seconds. Prater and Lapsley, the main event, has been a good one. One more attempt by Lapsley, but that is it. What a great fight. Very technical, a lot of heart by both fighters. And there you see the appreciation and respect to both fighters as they hug and now shake hands and hug again. Carlo Prater from Houston, Texas. Now living back in Brazil where he was born, he has dual citizenship, a Texas MMA legend. And he fought throughout with that cut over his left eye. It happened early in the first round. Anthony Lapsley, the recipe from Fort Wayne, Indiana, with a 6-0 and record coming into this. Uh, Prater came out looking for a big strike, and he did the high kick, and Lapsley just ducked under it. Looked like he was going to get the takedown, but he came out behind, and here he'll return Prater down to the mat. And once Prater got on top, Prater knew what to do. He found an opening, and he delivered a number of knees to Lapsley's side, but he couldn't put him away there. Boy, that's a lot of knees. And a great flurry at the end of the fight. Prater trying to get some scoring in, striking. Lapsley trying to get a couple last shots in. Goes for the rear naked just as time runs out. It'll go to the judges. Our judges are David Douglas, Kent Bassinger, and Mike Mitchell. And this is going to be a close call. Glad I don't have to make the decision. The judges have Prater or Lapsley. Bruce Buffer has their decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. All three judges score this contest 29-28, declaring the winner by unanimous decision, Carlo Prata! Carlo Prater wins for the 20th time in his pro career, and Anthony Lapsley suffers his first professional defeat. A unanimous decision victory for Prater. He is standing by with Ron and also up there, I believe, is Anthony Lapsley. Ron, you got them all together. Absolutely, we got two warriors together. This is what the art of war is all about. Let's hear it for these two guys who laid it all on the line tonight. Carla, we'll start with you. This was a very even fight. What do you believe the judges saw to give you this victory? Um, I, I understand there's booze, but we both fought really hard. And you don't understand the pressure we go through to get ready for a big event like this. Um, he got cut, I got cut. We, we were putting it on our line. Please don't boo us. Uh, please, you know. 
Absolutely. Now, Anthony, you came in and said that you wanted to see if you could get a TKO by a cut. How did you do that? You, you were successful at cutting the eye very early. Well, I just fought hard. First of all, I thank God. Give me the opportunity to come down and fight in beautiful Dallas. Uh, Carl's a great fighter. Uh, we just gave it all we had. You see we're both exhausted. And uh, I'll be back. Were you surprised by the decision that it was a unanimous decision his way? Of course. I, I kind of thought it went both ways. But uh, we fought hard. He deserves it. Very good. A true warrior. Guys, congratulations. Carlo, last question for you. This was a big win. I know you wanted to get the victory here in Texas. Your mom's here. Your grandpa's here. What's next for you? Um, honestly, I never looked past a fight. I just had Anthony Laps. Uh, I had another fighter. Uh, the Art of War pulled him about three weeks, a month ago. Then I started trying to get ready for Anthony Lapsley. Uh, I haven't thought about anything in the future yet. I was just thinking about this fight. He put on a hell of a war. Very strong, athletic no fighter. He's young in his career. I'm sure he'll go very far. No doubt. My hat goes off to him. Okay, guys. Great fight. Let's hear it for these two warriors. Kenny, back to you. Thanks, Ron. And what class acts both, Carlo Prater and the young Anthony Lapsley. It was a love fest in there at the end. And a great respect for two guys. It goes to unanimous decision. You got to give you got to give the young Lapsley a lot of credit. He hung in there against the veteran, and give the veteran a lot of credit. What a class act! Carlo Prater, his mom, a professor at Texas A&M, here to see him fight for the first time in his career, and he comes away with his 20th career victory. You're watching Friday Fight Night on HDNet. You're watching Friday Fight Night on HDNet. We get ready now for our main event. In Freddy Esprit Aquita, we are going to see a talented young boxer. We know that. How will he handle, though, a veteran MMA fighter in David Loesa? That's going to be a very interesting proposition. That's why they do the fight. Loesa has got a tremendous background in the UFC, a seven-time veteran there, wealth of experience. So I think that is an edge for him in a pressure cooker kind of situation. Esprit Aquino, though, is an amateur champion in boxing. He has gold glove experience, AAU experience. How will that transition here? They are the main event. Let's take a closer look now at our fighters. My name is David the Crow Loiseau. My strength as a fighter is my heart. I don't think anyone has my heart in the sport. My speed, my explosiveness, I got a lot of strength. Just keep on coming. My name is Freddy Spiricueta. Heart and soul, man. Heart and soul, a warrior. He's, he's a warrior, we're, we're two warriors. I say I bring in all my heart. His favorite technique in the cage is one that hurts my opponent the, the most. Come in and bang. Stay in the center of the ring. Make it a boxing match, make it a tight boxing match. Try to stay off the ground, stay off the cage. Keep it standing, everyone wants to see us two guys standing. That's what we got matched up for. He's a tie boxer, I'm a tie boxer. I'm a funny guy, laid back, you know, and, and I can switch from, from a funny laid back guy to when the bell rings to a predator, uh, a killer. This is my city, it's my town, Austin, Texas. Uh, I grew up here, big crowd favorite, hometown boy. I just, I look to use that energy in the ring and it's gonna get me even that much more pumped up. To all the fans, remember, when the smoke is cleared, and it's time to fight when the bell rings. It's not showtime, it's crow time. This would almost look like a classic confrontation, although Loeso has more experience on the ground and standing up. You see this as being a stand-up versus grappler decision. Well, I think that gives the edge to uh, Loeso simply because he can bring the fight to the ground if he's not liking what he's getting in the standing position. Plus, watch out for the elbows that David can throw. Very good. We get ready now for the main event. Freddy Espria Cueta, six foot, 185 pounder, makes his home base now in Austin. A former Golden Gloves boxer, he is also versed in Muay Thai. All four of his wins are by knockout, and he's also got IFL experience. From Montreal, Quebec, now coming to the cage, David the Crow LaSalle, six foot, 185 pounder, a record of 14 and seven. A tremendous striker with UFC experience. 
His best weapons aren't just his hands. David has dangerous elbows. And the tail of the tape, Loyasso, with much more professional experience. We'll see if that pays off, or Espriaqueta playing here in front of the hometown crowd. How will that benefit him? Let's meet the fighters now. Here's ring announcer Tom Looney. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, Damas y Caballeros. This bout scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red trunks. This man is a former IFL contender, holding a professional record of four wins and two losses. He's six feet tall. He weighed in today at 185 pounds. Fighting out of Austin, Texas. Representing the Southeast Asian Academy, formerly known as Ferocious, now known as the Red Devil, El Diablo Rojo, Freddy Espiriqueta. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, He's wearing black trunks tonight. Holds a professional record of 14 wins, seven losses. He's also six feet tall, and he too weighs 185 pounds. From the great white north, Montreal, Quebec. Representing Tri-Star Jim. Known as the Crow, David Luazo. Luazo again, Espriaquita. This should be a very interesting main event we're seeing here in Art of War II. A strong boxing background has the Austin-based Espriaquita. As you look at him, all four of his pro victories have come by way of knockout. Lorasso with more than three times the pro experience. It's scheduled for three five-minute rounds and the main event's underway. And Lorasso's been in there with Fricklin, Jeremy Horn, Rich Franklin, Evan Tanner, Mike Swick. These are all big names from the UFC. Espriaquita not impressed by that resume in the early going. Nor should he be. But that's a wealth of experience that Loasso can draw on. As Loasso likes to say, he's nicknamed the Crow. It ain't showtime, it's Crow time. We'll see if he can continue to boast that. Well, I like the way he looks here. He's very composed, measuring his opponent. Seems like the boxer is the one that's doing the backing up. Nice double, puts him right down. Lalasso with the slam, Espriaquita is in a position he did not want to be in less than a minute into this fight. Did not want to get this on the ground that quickly, if at all. This is where Lalasso can do the most damage. Both corners felt that way coming into this main event. And Lawson getting a couple of punches in right in front of us here. As Spriaqueta being cheered on by the hometown crowd. And if that's any consolation here in the early going, what can he do against this veteran grounder? Well, he needs to keep distance, and he's doing a tremendous job of that right now. He's trying to keep Lawson down by his uh, lap, by his belt line, making it difficult for him to strike to the head. As Priaquita, a very quick fighter. Very active fighter throughout his boxing career before he got into MMA. Side mount now by Luasso. If he can bring the knee up at all to the stomach, he'll be in a position to truly strike. And 
I just, I think this is the experience. He's not rushing it. You wonder if Esprit Akita also might have something up his sleeve here, if there's any way he can get out of this. He's showing some game here, more than I thought he'd have on the ground. Well, he keeps moving back down, you see there, trying to make sure that Loasso's not able to do a lot of work, a lot of damage with his hands. He should be cutting more to his left hip and trying to pull his left knee in to try to get to at least half guard. There, he's getting that left leg around now. If that gets that, tuck that foot under, he'll get it. The knee's doing the job of holding the hips of Loasso away. Esprit Akita doing a lot of work here on defense. Nice job. And now he's back up. Stand him back up. And that's part of the rules. Neither left fighter can improve position or move him to back to the feet. Referee Kerry Hatley wasting no time. We've seen him in action before. He won't let him just stay there. They've got to be active. Esprit Akita has to love this back on his feet with his strong position. Got a nice little combo there. Threw a leg kick, came back with a punch right after it. Nice combination. Did it again. Esprit Akita flicking out that jab. Clearly more confident standing up. Also missing wildly. That one didn't miss. Time. And there he goes, and Esprit Akita getting a taste of his own medicine. Lasso showing his punching ability. Maybe not the classic boxer that Esprit Akita is, but very strong in his punches as we've seen, and now he moves into a full mount. And he's in a great position now to rain down blows. And they're not gonna be punches. They're gonna be forearms and elbows because that doesn't take you out of position. Esprit Akita back on the ground. They're also continuing to control this fight. Esprit Akita is doing a nice job of tying the arms up for Loasso as well. Sometimes getting double overhooks makes it tough for Loasso to free his arms to strike. Round one is coming to a close. Can't believe he wasn't punching there. Esprit Akita bouncing up, showing a little frustration perhaps by allowing it to go to the ground. Well, he's smiling now to his, whoever his trainer is there. That should be Val Espriaquita or Israel Espriaquita. It's a family affair over there. Well, Espriaquita has got to feel pretty good right now. I mean, Loasso had his opportunity to give him his best, and he was able to handle it. And here's, here's what Loasso can do. It's down there. He's got big punching power, and he also used some great forearms and elbows coming down, but he just didn't look that busy. And that one caught him on the temple, and you can see he had to put his hand down to catch balance. But he quickly weathered that storm. And then once he got him up to the fence, Lasso showing power, just folding as Piraquita right over. The veteran, the crow. A man with three times the pro experience, David Lasso in the dark trunks. Freddy Espriakita in the red. Let's see if that left hook comes after the kick. Yes, it did. He did that earlier in the fight. The left hook will come again if he throws the right leg. Espriakita, very comfortable in the boxing stance. We talked about his AAU and gold glove, Muay Thai competition as well. Loasso, though, while he may look like he's laboring when he lunges in for some of those punches, we saw one land the biggest punch so far in this fight. A swing and left that caught the temple of Esprit Akita back in the first round. Now he shoots in and Loasso gets it back to the mat, which is where he wants to keep it. 
Well, the Spiraquita has not really thrown very many punches in the standing position. He's thrown more kicks than he has punches. A little surprising that Espriaquita would not go in more for the punches. You're right. I would think that that would be his number one offense and then change up with the kick. Well, Espriaquita right now has to show his defense one more time. He has been in the IFL, so Freddie's no stranger to big competition. This is his toughest fight and still a young fighting career for the 29-year-old from Austin. Well, also, you mentioned the resume, the people that he has fought in UFC competition, and he's been very active here on the ground. Full side mount again. Let's see how it'll go after Freddie here and see if he can't work either a submission or more strikes. I would doubt that Espria Aquita really has the experience like this with four knockouts in all four of his victories to be effective from the guard position in terms of anything other than making sure he doesn't get hurt. I don't know how effective offensively he can be. But he is keeping He's not getting Lasso hurt. Also from yeah. being that effective. So this is an effective defense, even though Loasso has got side mount. But he's got full mount now. And seems to have a modified choke in there. Side choke. And it looks to be pretty tight. Loasso working hard under two minutes. There it is. He's he's got it. Round. That's it. That is it. David Loasso has submitted Freddy Espriaquita. Did a nice job of folding the over, arm over the face, get his shoulder in behind the elbow, lock it up tight, and start to squeeze. And every time he can, tighten it another half inch. Well, we saw the experience of Loasso paying off in this fight. David Loasso coming in with 21 pro fights entering this one. Freddy Espriaquita coming in for his sixth overall pro fight and that's what happened when it went back to the ground here in this second round it is Loasso who is able to go from the side mount and end it right there modified front choke and David Loasso picking up career victory number 15 over a very game if still inexperienced Freddy Espriaquita let's go to Tom Looney now to get the official time Ladies and gentlemen, Damas y Caballeros, referee Kelly Hatley stops the fight at three minutes, ten seconds of the second round. Your winner from Montreal, Quebec, David the Crow. Well, Luaso, who says it ain't showtime, it's crow time. Plenty to crow about over a very game Espri Akita, but just too much dominance here from the more experienced MMA fighter. He is standing by now with Jeff. Thanks, Kenny. Now, David, you seem to take your time there. Do you think your experience, all the fights you've had, particularly in the UFC, really helped you here? Oh, definitely. You know, um, I have a lot of experience, but, you know, now I showed a new David Luaso tonight, you know. I'm a, the Luazo now takes people down, has takedowns, has submissions. I'm working hard and I, I'm going to come back stronger every time. And thank you so much, Texas, Austin, Texas. You guys are the best. You guys are the best crowd. Thank you so much for hospitality. Thank you. Well, that was an impressive, impressive performance. Uh, why don't you look up here to the screen? Talk us through the uh, tap out. Um, yeah, I had full mount. I got, I, I got the arm choke and uh, went to side mount, finished it from there. You know, he, uh, he, he fought very hard. You know, he looked good. Um, I'm happy I'm, I, I won. I'd like to thank, uh, especially Greg Jackson, Team Jackson, my team, TriStar Montreal, Brian Kane, BrianKane.com, and uh, AlanCosgrove.com. Please check him out on the website. Thank you. David, congratulations. Well Woo! done. Thank you very much. Ottawa, baby.
Thanks, Jeff. And just like the veteran fighter he is, he makes sure he got all the sponsors in. Very smoothly done by David the Crow Lueso, who picks up the victory here tonight, his 15th overall. Eight of those now coming by way of submission. More when we come back. You're watching Art of War 2 Mixed Martial Art Action on Friday Fight Night on HDNet. Stay with us. We'll be back from Austin, Texas. You're watching Friday Fight Night on HDNet. Go inside the NHL like never before. I'm in the Avs locker room with Captain Joe Sackett. With unprecedented access to the game's top players, previews of the league's yeah. hottest matchups, and so much more. Inside the NHL, Thursday night at 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific on HDNet. You're watching Friday Fight Night on HDNet. And in Art of War 2, our main event, Freddy Esprit Akita. Four knockouts for victories in his career against the veteran David Luasso. Luasso came right out, delivered a hard left, able to fold, take down his opponent, and then put him in a choke to end it. Luasso with over three times the experience, and it pays off as he gets the victory. Thank you for being with us. For Jeff Blatnick, Ron Kruk, and our great crew here in Austin, Texas, I'm Kenny Rice. So long, everyone.